you came to Japan not doing coke, not doing uh, coke. teaching not. English, the skinny mm. soccer playing kid, as far as right. I understand, That's and right. then went to a sumo tournament, got involved and said, great. Mm. I'll do this. Let me sign up. Let me sign up for this sumo thing. Well, no, first there was, um, I was with the soccer team one time. We went to this museum. And while I was in the museum, I got this like weird sensation in my arm. And I went home and I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and I was actually twice as heavy as I'd been the day before. So it turns out I'd been bitten by a radioactive ricochet. I see. While I was in the museum. Yes. I was, I was well following done. you. Pretty you like, almost had me there for a second. I was, I was like, like, oh, I haven't, I haven't found this. By a spot. Wait, radio radio spider. Like sumo man. And now I'm sumo man. So, you know, that's, that's, that's my origin story. So with great weight comes great responsibility. <laughs> John Gumming. You done got me for most of that. Almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, lot, I yeah. do have one I do have a question about your sumo career in Japan and, and you're, you know, you're, you're quite amazing amateur sumo career. Yeah, you started at 30. Yeah. Um, no, 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 you're right. Now just the, the, the use of the adjective amazing. I think that's the first time I've ever actually heard that used in, in you know, connection with my amateur sumo career. Well, you go to I've a heard 30. a lot of adjectives, I've heard a lot of adjectives used to describe my amateur sumo career, but amazing, that's definitely a first, you know. <laughs> Well, you were on the sumo that's team. More, that's more like that. Now, that's more like the reaction people have when they think my amateur sumo career. That's closer to it. I do have, okay, two very silly little questions. One, One. you're in Japan, you're studying sumo. How is it that you compete for the, for the Irish team when you're studying sumo in Japan? Well, because he's because not like, Japanese. I'm like any Eastern European leader. I'm actually the president of Sumo Ireland. So, you know, I can I put see. myself on the team, so. You could just um, put yourself up on anybody's team. Yeah. Anyone who has, you know, a passport can, you know, just hit me up and, you know. Um, yeah. So the world championships is done on nation by nation state. You know, I mean, there's obviously there's individual categories and there's team tournaments, but it's like judo or any other thing. There's national teams. So, um, yeah, there's nobody else in Ireland at the time doing sumo or nobody else Irish. So, so you were the team. Very easy to yeah. make the team. Yeah, at the beginning, I was like, right, I'm the team. He's the shoe in. Yeah. <laughs> First Find place. pictures of myself all across the house, you know? I see. I'm the president. <laughs> While competing as the one and only member of the Irish sumo team, um, yes. uh, you did very well. Uh, but no, at, no. at some point, you did not do well at all. You, you did and three? Three tournaments. Yes, right. three sumo world championships, 2007, 2008, and 2012, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And then after that, at some point, you you broke your upper Just arm bone. Fucking destroyed it. Lengthwise. No. That was no. before the world championships. Before. before. Yeah, so that was, uh, that injury happened late 2005. Late okay. 2005. So I was out of action all of 2006 and half of 2007 so okay so you had that injury pulled yourself back together and then went on to the sumo world, world championships Championship. okay yes. so my question is how does one even break their humerus lengthwise like yeah. that is incredible to me what was it a throw was it the way you landed i was in training in training fights and the night before, I think I'd been out partying, so I wasn't like in, in the best of condition. And I think I went straight from the club to training, to be honest with you. And um, so I wasn't doing things that well, and I wasn't doing them the way you should be doing. So in Yotsu, like when you have the shtate, the, the one hand underneath and on the back of the mawashi. So that's what yeah. I had. I, my left in under his right, holding the back of the mawashi, and he had the what the overarm grip where his yeah. right was over my left so like you know it's like that usually you know we see like two guys trying to throw each other yeah and but i was not in close enough normally you want to be in close because you want to get the angle and the leverage oh. so um but i was i was doing it haphazardly because you know i was still hung over and i wasn't focused so i was out far so my arm was stretched out like that and his whole weight went down on my arm and it split the bone lengthways and my arm bent backwards up because it broke. And then my head went straight into the doyo. And like, yeah, so 
<laughs> it was yeah, it was pretty painful. So like I was um, I was there screaming in pain under in the ring because I'd never actually that was the, I think it was the first major bone I'd ever broken. So I didn't really know what was happening. Just had this massive. It's like somebody get a big branch and break it. You know that big crack. Yeah, noise. yeah. And um, obviously I got a concussion as well when I hit my head so hard and. They had to come in. I couldn't like they couldn't even get me off the ring. So like the ambulance had to come in, and it was a basement guy also that had to come down with the stretcher and and roll me onto the stretcher in the Mawashi. And um, <laughs> it's like I went to the hospital and in the ambulance, and they had I, I was losing hearing and sight. So my hearing and my sight kept going in and out. So I couldn't see anything and I couldn't hear anything for for a few minutes. And so they had to do an MRI on my brain to see if there was bleeding on the brain or whatever. Yeah. And they couldn't do it because there was so much sand in my ears and hair from the ring. So like it was interfering. So like I've this nurse and like trying to hold out my ears. And I, I mean, I, it was funny because I was laughing at the stu- at the ridiculousness of the situation, even though like, you know, my arm was hanging off at the shoulder and like, you know, I couldn't hear anything, but I couldn't stop. I was like crying. I, know I was crying in pain and laughter at the whole lot. Like, but eventually they got it. And uh, so, yeah, it's. I mean, I could have gotten all, you know, like 15 pins and bolts and everything to stick it all back together. But I had this brilliant uh, doctor and he said, you know, if you if you put it in a gravity cast, it will it will take like a year and a half, but the bone will fuse back together by itself. And that means you don't have the risk of surgery. You won't have to miss any work. You won't have a hospital stay. I mean, you won't be able to use your like so I couldn't actually moved my arm for four months because all the nerves were severed as well so they didn't know if i would actually get movement back in this arm Mm. so this arm was tied to my body for four months like i used to have a sling around and it would be tied so everything was luckily i do everything right-handed so um that was fine but then like after four months i was able to move the finger so i knew like the nerves had reconnected so i would have at least i would have some range of motion back and i did yeah like once i took about 18 months for the bones to fuse back together but because they were just done it by gravity like the bone shape is now weird it's like one of those 1970s sesame street type illustrations you know it goes in all weird angles but um that yeah then rehab and eventually i got full range of motion back and then i went back doing sumo again and all the people who had supported me told me fuck you you're on your own for doing this again you know um oh. i had I, that's 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 not true but i had a lot of people that like literally were like after everything that happened you're actually going to go back in and fight again i'm and sure I, yeah i said i have to sure i'm brain damaged now you know you have a rocker mentality about yeah, everything you can't, in life yeah yeah you can't get cotton cost twice that's what i said to them <laughs> Well, then what like made the you finally? Pops. Yeah. Well, didn't like your coach? Pops, you could only get your it coach once. Just say like, "Well, get back in there." Uh, yeah. So when I showed up, the first like the when I had the cast from shoulder to wrist, like the plaster. You call it plaster Paris? Sure. Uh, yeah, you call it plaster Paris. That like that hard white material. So the entire arm from shoulder to wrist was plaster Paris because all the blood drained down into my fingers as well. It was like a derime on hand. All the fingers were swollen. So it was like just big one round knot. Yeah. And uh, it was just like tied to my body. Bandages everywhere, face all cut and bad. I just came in like it was a month after the, the injury. And I went in and I said, you know, I'm still alive. I'll be back in a year and a half. I'm body mask, all the rest. And they're just like, you want to do some squats? <laughs> Look at me. I can, my, the bones are floating around and like, you know, every movement is agony. Like, well, there's nothing wrong with your legs. So, you know, go do some squats. So I did. And then I kept, so actually I didn't leave training. I, I would get some people to put them a washi on me. And then I would just like do squats and leg stuff with the cast for the first like year, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. But you know, that goes back to what I said when you're earlier, when you're young, you just have no sense at all. So, you know, you, you know. definitely, though, I've read in your articles, have talked about CTE as far as the sumo world goes mm-hmm. and some of the terrible, you know, catastrophic injuries that have happened as of late. Do you mm. feel that the JSA or the community at large has the spirit more that's like, well, it's always happened like this. We go and meet sumo every single day. It's a brutal sport. That is how it is. Or do you feel that there's been a change or a shift the one thing people have to realize the sumo association is not a monolith right it's mm-hmm. not a single thing it's got 
whatever, a thousand members of Rikishi, Oyakata, all the rest. So you got a lot of people who have a lot of differing views and, and they cover the entire range of the spectrum. So uh, yeah, the machismo mindset is still there, obviously for a lot. And also it just, the whole CT issue, the concussion issue hasn't reached Japan yet in the way. Yeah, I mean, it's a still a relatively new thing. I mean, you go back five, 10 years ago in the States as well. And, yeah. you know, the idea of CT or con concussions wasn't even known or heard of, you know, people thought like once you're not among the general public, we'll say, obviously some people know it, but among, among general sports fans or people in the sport. And I mean, you can still see it. There's a video that was uh, spread widely on social media last week or the week before somebody showing like they're teaching eight or nine year old kids and they set it up where one it's in the state somewhere playing football and one kid absolutely creams the other one like hits him full on with the helmet and you have all the parents standing around laughing and like whoa that like you know big reaction so i mean that still goes on like even though it's widely known you still have people in all sports especially at a youth level and a kid's level which is where you know the the biggest problem lies in my opinion you know so um it's not really, it hasn't seeped into the public consciousness or the JSA consciousness, I think. I think more obviously in recent times because in very recent times, it's become an issue and it's become a bit more known. But I've been banging on about this on live broadcasts for 10 years, you know? Um, but I knew it would take time. It takes time for anything like that to, in any country to seep in properly and. Yeah, hopefully it will improve over the years, but it's not soon enough. You know, a lot needs to be done and a lot needs to be done quickly, but uh, I wouldn't hold out hope of that happening. You know, Here in football, I know you're a big American football fan and you love the Bears, mm. but mm. like with all of the CTE stuff, even we were, we're able to still move faster than yeah than japan and and as really? far as like different padding like our football, well, that's, football players the the penalties for hitting yeah. the quarterback in the head and i don't know when that came there's into two play things but... with that there's there's like you're hitting on two issues there right so one is japan is obviously a consensus-based culture so you know pe people don't make decisions and then dictate to the people below them but generally everyone has to be consulted and everyone has to give their feedback so as a culture, things move slowly anyway. That's just by design because it's a yeah, it's not an individualistic based society. It's a group based society, and so it's very val. It's important for the way things work that everyone is on board before action is made. But then the other one with the rules in football or rugby or any other sport is you have lots that you can change. In football, you can improve the helmets. You can change the way people tackle. You can change the rules. Same in rugby. You know uh any contact nowadays with the head whether intentional or in unintentional is an automatic red card you know it doesn't if, if actually even above the shoulders even in the neck if you hit somebody above the neck in rugby nowadays you're off immediately it doesn't matter even if they even if they person carrying the ball dips down into the tackle yeah it's your responsibility to make sure as a tackler that you get low enough or that you pull out i mean there are lots of cases where it's not physically possible to do that and it's unavoidable contact but still they send the player off mm -hmm. so it's like you have to be proactively ready to just you know they there's no they don't give any wiggle room whatsoever in rugby you know it's like any contact with the head or neck you're off that's it but in sumo there's no equipment to modify and sumo is essentially, as I often say, compared to line play in American football, right? You've got two people at very close range and they're banging into each other. And so like they're coming in the low man, as they say in football, like trying to get their pad level lower. So like basically you're trying to get in underneath. So both people are trying to get the heads down, you know, so put your head up like this. It's, you know, it's a guaranteed loss. So the difficulty is what do you change in sumo? And I mean, I've said like going back to the 1970s style Tachiai where they were basically at standing starts. Mm -hmm. That's about the only thing really that I could think of that would limit the number. I mean, you're still going to get head contact during the fight and you'll still get it maybe in training and stuff like that, but it would definitely lessen those massive coconut type cracks that you hear and that you see even in like three four-year-old kids doing in in sumo and being encouraged by the parents which is the worst you know Ooh. that is you know that's so that's what that's about the only thing i could think of um obviously better aftercare better you know people this is the thing everyone is saying you know you need better stuff 
at ringside, you need better immediate care. But in you know, for head injury, prevention is obviously better. You know, mm -hmm. prevention is, I mean, there's no cure as such. So you, you really need better prevention. So 1970s style touchy eye, maybe it'd be one thing if people have other suggestions, maybe it'd be good, but it's hard to think of what can be modified. Suma doesn't really have a lot of room to modify anything. True. And they would look awfully silly if we added pads 